Hey y'all, welcome back. So we are here, I'm doing another 76 tour here. Uh, and this is what I call my stilt house. Uh, and uh, let's take a look. First off, let me show you where we're at. We are here right on the border between uh, the Savage Divide and the Mire. I found this when working on the, uh, um, the challenge from, uh, or not the challenge, but the quest for to get uh, uh, the astronaut, the Commander Sophia. So um, I just stumbled across it while I was working on it, and I thought this would be a really cool place to build a camp. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to come down here. I'm going to start. I'm going to get my light on because it's a little dark, even though it's in the middle of the day here. Uh, so this area made it a little difficult because this uh, this table here, this picnic table, you cannot, uh, it won't auto scrap. Neither will these barrels. Oh, that's not what I want. There we go. Uh, <laughs> these barrels and that little raft thing out there uh, won't auto scrap. So you actually can't build, you can't build uh, foundations on them. Uh, and so I tried to kind of work around it, but it was not, I was not happy with how it was turning out. So I went with this instead. So you see, I've got my little uh, ring of fire fire pit here with a nice little band scattered around it. Uh, but you see, I got all these stilts. Now, these are, of course, not required. Uh, for anybody who has built in 76, they know that, yeah, they're not required, but it looks nice. I don't, I'm not a fan of uh, floating camps. So, uh, yeah, I just, I think this looks much nicer having it like this. Um, and, you know, you see that they all kind of go down to that one back there. Uh, it's a little weird. It is really floating there is no no way i i couldn't get it um to go in better and i really wanted one on the corner uh but from a distance you really can't tell that it's you know looking at it from over here you can't tell that it doesn't all go all the way down but again it doesn't matter uh the, there's no need for the actual support anyway but i got pillars all the way around just to kind of make it look nice and look like it's supported uh so this, of course, is my reward from Season 1. Uh, I was able to complete that. Uh, I put this in just because I was... I think people were getting confused when they came here. They didn't know which way to go. Uh, so you got the workshop up there, and then the shopping is in here. So let's go ahead, and we're going to take a look at the workshop first. And we come up these stairs. And here is our workshop. Pardon the grass growing through the stash box over there. But, uh, yeah, I, I like how this turned out. This is actually what I built first, um, and I'll show you why in just a second. I, I really like this spot because you got this little path, you got that cool little pond down below, but you also have a little pond up above. So, it's very cool, so I built this nice little kind of patio deck thing where people can relax and cook and all that. Um, but I like this, that, that there's two ponds and there's not even a... Uh, a little stream or anything flowing between them but uh, yeah I, I kind of made this into a nice workshop with uh, you know mounted heads and stuff around just for fun uh, some trophies but this was actually fairly difficult I had to start up here to make sure that I could get this lined up and then the way this this little uh, path here uh, the ground slope here how it works it um, it works poorly. Um, I had a lot of trouble getting these pillars to uh, get into place. Again, they're unnecessary. We don't need these pillars, but I wanted something to look like it was supporting this uh, the stairs here. Uh, if I had to build it out this far, because if I built it back any further, the stairs wouldn't snap in because for whatever reason. Uh, the game thinks that there is water here. Uh, there's not, obviously, as you can see. There is no water anywhere down here. But that is the furthest up the hill that I could place that pillar. Uh, I tried it on this side, tried to put one right here in the middle, and it, it didn't like it. 
Um, it kept thinking it was I'm trying to place it in water, which of course I'm not. But yeah, there's there's apparently some underground water or the water table for this little pond back here uh, invisibly sticks out uh, this far or something. I, I don't know, but it's weird. Anyway, um, so now we're going to go take a look at the house. Uh, but I was able to get this coming through, and I think it works out pretty well. Because if I stuck it back too far, uh, you know, this the stairs here wouldn't have been able to... They'd be glitching into the ground a little too much anyway. So, it works out. Uh, I've also got a couple of... Those are Firefly jars. Uh, firefly lamps. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're called, but they're a little Firefly. You see them kind of glow up. It's kind of nice. I like it, because it's... It feels like it's almost random. I don't know if it actually is random, but their glow pattern. Um, anyway, let's go take a look at the house. So we come in here, we start off in the kitchen. Uh, I got this nice and set up here. Uh, I like how this turned out. I got my stove, my actual cooking stove, and then a sink. Uh, and then I decided to put the uh, Nuka Shine, the, the brewing station and the fermenter over here uh, to kind of complete the kitchen. Uh, and a nice little table with my beer steins. And then we've got all my shops over here. I have turned those off temporarily. Um, and I'll show you how I've wired this up uh, in a little bit. But um, got the, uh, the ammo converter over here and a nice little sitting area with a piano. Uh, and then we come upstairs. Hello, Sophia, are you here? Okay, you're not coming downstairs. Uh, so as you see in my last build, I had, this is, uh, this is something I like to do. Uh, just kind of block the path, the, the uh, open areas here, and uh, just to make sure that, you know, it looks better, personally. So, we've got uh, this area here. I got a lot of windows. I like having these windows. They, they really help light up the room, uh, and it looks really good. Uh, we're going to start in here, and this is, you'll recognize this, of course. This is, of course, my fancy bathroom. Uh, I keep working on this, and I really like how this has been turning out. Uh, you recognize this from my Fallout uh, 4 tower build, if you watch that. But uh, I do like how this works out. The, the downside, of course, is the toilet, and the, uh, the tubs are terrible looking. They look awful. Uh, Fallout 4, at least we get a nice clean toilet, even if we don't get clean tubs. Um, but in this one, we also get nice clean mirrors nice nice mirrors here and i do really like these uh these little tables that they gave us and the sinks the sinks are nice because they stand they're freestanding uh they don't mount to the wall they mount to the ground um or they stand on the ground and these little uh tables here look really nice and, and kind of fancy looking so i do like how that turned out but um yeah so this is my uh this is the version i've got in here the nice thing about it in 76 is uh, all of these uh, these tables will stack on top of each other. You'll you'll uh, be able to uh, the, the um, I've got a layer of these tables. You can kind of see it under there, uh, back there. Um, the tables, this bottom layer of tables goes all the way back to the wall, and uh, they they will stack on top of each other. You'll be able to place them on top of each other, and you'll be able to place the tubs on top of them as well as these metal boxes or whatever you decide to use as the the side mounts, um, the side steps, I guess. Um, in Fallout 4, they do not. Uh, they they don't like stacking on top of each other, and you have to pillar glitch them. But in 76, at least. Uh, you could just place them, which is one of the nice things about it here. Makes it a whole lot easier to actually build it, and it actually makes it possible in this game. And if it was like Fallout 4, it would not. Now, you will notice as well, um, I do have um, double walls. I got wallpaper on both sides, and I did that from... Uh, I figured out how to do it, but I also learned it from one of my friends. The uh, the upper portion of it here, uh, and I'm going to post a link. It's uh, Lucy Jane Plays, uh, and she's got a video, a little tutorial on how to do this. Primarily, I couldn't figure out how to get these, uh, these triangle pieces up above to be double wall-sided. Uh, Double-sided walls here, and uh, she showed how to do that, and so I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, the other thing I've got here is those posts outside by the stairs, 
and these pillars right here uh, are from uh, Wasteland Dovahkiin. Uh, she does uh, a great tutorial on how to do those and how to get those in there. I really like how this turns out where it it really helps disguise the uh, the the interior corners because they didn't do a great job uh, setting that up in this game. Uh, it's a little difficult and a little awkward to see those. Uh, so it, it looks a whole lot better having a pillar in there uh, rather than just the bare corners of the walls here. Uh, anyway, so this right here is uh, Commander Sophia, Commander Daguerre. Uh, it's her room. This is the guest room. And I set this up for her. She likes cats. Uh, so I've got her a little seating chair and I got her a lamp with a, a fish in it because why not? And then some, a couple of cats. And of course, you got to have the plushie because she's an astronaut. And she also likes comics, even though I didn't actually put anything up for comics. I probably could put some over here. Anyway. Um, but yeah. So that's her nice little room over here. Uh, and then this is the, this is my bedroom here. And I got this. Of course, this is also the wallpapers. You'll notice they're also from season one. Uh, I updated a lot of stuff from the season one stuff just because I thought it looked really cool. Um, this is a mix of two different wallpapers here. Uh, you'll see there's some that have the planets and the rockets and the shooting stars and others that just have the stars. Uh, those are two different wallpapers. Uh, luckily, they, uh, they blend together really well. Uh, and it's it's hard to s tell. I would have to turn, you know, scrap the fire, turn off the lights, and have it be nighttime in order for you to see. But these technically do glow in the dark. Uh, it's a glow in the dark wallpaper, so uh, you know, do with that how you wish. Um, and then, of course, I got my little planetarium lamp, which doesn't really work very well, uh, and a little plushy alien. Got my work desk over here with my uh, Vault Fifty One Overseer chair. And a nice glow-in-the-dark as well map of West Virginia. So that is that. I do like also this right here. Um, you'll see the it goes through. The chimney actually goes through. If you put the uh, the angled roof like this uh, with a half wall, the the chimney will actually go up through the roof and it makes it a whole lot better. It actually sends it outside, and all the smoke is going outside. Uh, so it actually looks really cool looks like it actually should so I like it I'm glad uh, that works so <laughs> um, but let me go ahead and show you real quick the uh, let's see I'm gonna do the, the power uh, let's show you how I've got this all powered up so uh, this right here I just strung the the lights around I had to go up one in order to get a couple of the other lights to work but it's all on the outside, and you can't see it from any of the windows. Um, and this one right here is actually the one that feeds in. I just swapped this wall out, and uh, uh, I'm able I'm able to uh, feed that in to power my vending machines. Um, and then I bring it up here, and I had to bring one down here in order to make sure that these lights actually worked. Oh, that's already on. Uh, but I had to I had to make sure that in order to get these lights to work, I had to get a, uh, a, a power conduit right over here uh, in order to power those. And the power comes all the way up here, and it just sits. I've got five of these on top, and that just makes sure that all of my uh, vending machines are powered on. Originally... I didn't have all five of those. I had only one up there, uh, and they I didn't have the wire stringing across. What I had was I originally built right here a uh, uh, a windmill generator. I thought that would look really cool in this place, but unfortunately the enemies kept coming by. And this is a higher level area now with one wasteland getting introduced. It technically doesn't matter anymore. But when I first built this, uh, this was before that patch. And uh, the enemies were higher level. They were around level, uh, I don't know, 50-ish. Uh, 
uh, and they would come in and the first thing they would do is immediately attack my generator and destroy it. So <laughs> I got tired. I, after about four repairs on that thing in a, about two days, I decided, you know what, this is just not going to work. So I moved all of the uh, generators, all the power generators up on the roof here of the workshop and just made them these so that they're silent. I like these because they are silent. Um, there's, there's no noise from them, which is great. Uh, and, you know, they're small, they're flat. They can stack on top of each other, but I didn't really want to stack them because I didn't want to have something that enemies could attack. Uh, so keeping them on this level uh, makes it a lot harder for enemies to attack these things. Uh, and then, of course, lastly, I've got my little garden over here. And I don't know. Uh, let's see. Is anything destroyed? And my little turbo furt, uh, which is... Oh, good. Everything is good. So my little garden, all I've got is some corn and some razor grain because mostly I just use it as a place to... Uh, gather what I need in order to craft alcohol. Uh, this, this character really, he carries a lot of alcohol on him and he's, he's very, uh, quick to, uh, craft alcohol, uh, whenever he needs it. Uh, then this thing is nice for those that don't know the turbo furt. Uh, what it does is it's a little grenade. You throw it down after you have harvested and the crops will immediately grow back. Now it will not repair anything. But it will, uh, you can, here, let me show you real quick, just for fun. We'll just pick a few. We'll pick the corn here. There we go. All the corn. Okay, that one. There you go. As you see, all the corn is picked. Uh, the razor grain is not, but the corn is. Let's grab the turbo furt. Come in here. Uh, oh, it is a weapon. All the way down. Throw it. Boom. And now I can harvest all the corn again. And it's just that simple. So I can grab even more corn. Just grab more. And there we go. And as you see, I now have 60 corn. Uh, I don't know why 60. I guess I grabbed some before, or... Maybe I was getting four out of some of those. I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it's that simple. It's nice and it's easy and it works. Um, it does nothing else. This turbo furt does nothing else. No damage to enemies or anything like that. But it's nice to have if you're, uh, if you're, if you've got a garden and you need to, to craft some stuff and you're harvesting and need to craft more. Uh, it's great also for repairs. If you're able to get, uh, like one of these to survive, um, you know, one, one of each survives an attack because now the enemies, of course, they attack my garden first. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's nice to have because you, you harvest what you can, throw down a turbo fart, and then you can harvest again and repair even more. That works out really well. But, uh, anyway, that is the, uh, that's my build here. Uh, I'm going to probably tear this down shortly and go ahead and move somewhere. I don't know where yet, but I will be moving. Uh, depending on how I like that, uh, the new camp, I may do a tour of that. Uh, we shall see. Um, but yeah, oh, one last thing. This is where my camp unit is. This is not the center of the build, of course. The center of the build is, I think I placed it right around here, uh, somewhere on these rocks here. But this, I placed it over here. It's, it's right on the edge because this is what determines uh, from my uh, experience, from what I've uh, gone through, this is what determines where your, uh, uh, wh where anybody will spawn in. And with this right here, it's actually the spawn point is somewhere uh, around here. Uh, right around this area right over here which is great this is this is right where I want people to spawn in is right in here so they come in they see this sign and they go up to the workshop if they need to or up into the house to actually do their shopping so anyway 
that's my build. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, again, I will have the links in the description for both the uh, Lucy Jane plays and the Wasteland Dovahkiin videos uh, describing how to do these things in more detail. So I uh, hope you guys like this, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.